Welcome, welcome, people. It's your boy Q from Queued Up Productions coming at you with another tutorial. Uh, this one I'm doing inside of Reason 10. Uh, just got it not too long ago, so I'm still kind of learning my way around it. The last one I had was Reason 8. Not a whole lot of differences, but a few. Uh, this one, uh, again, I want to stay with the whole template theme that I started with. Um, only doing one inside of Reason. Uh, Reason is more of a, um, it's kind of a hybrid. Some would say it was originally made for EDM music, but of course, you know, anything that you can use to make music, you can turn into whatever you want to turn into. So uh, this one does it more by the rat version. You can turn it around and, and do different types of routing. Uh, you know, you basically can route whatever you want. I mean, it's a great program. But at any rate, um, just like we did in Logic Pro, uh, same thing here applies. Uh, I'd like to divide all my kicks and snares uh, separate. Uh, and there's more than one way you can do this, obviously. You can, uh, instead of having it separate this way, you can also, uh, which I've seen other people do, is have a, a redrum. And you can actually go out of the redrum and then into separate mix channels and then output those. That way you can use the sequencer to uh, to go through and, and, you know, make your beats that way if you don't want to come in and, and actually click them in that way. So choice is yours. Um, so basically what you do is, you know, you just come through and you put, uh, I, I, for this, uh, this version, I just put in an NXT, um, go down here and then just, you know, put whatever kicks or snares or you can layer them however you want if you bring in a group of uh of kicks or or samples inside of here and you would click and uh to layer them contiguously and it'll go ahead and spread everything out uh one per key or however you want to you want to set it up but uh that's that's fairly simple to do all right so i just have each nnxt loaded up that way and then inside of the mixer channel as you can see they're coming across uh, and then once you get as many sounds in there as you want for drums or percussion, whatever you think you may use, uh, then you can come in here. Oops. You can come right down to here and you can go in and uh, choose a bus. You would just go new bus and then name that bus whatever you wanted to name it. And then you do that for each one of your channels or as a group, however you want to do it. And you can send them to another bus. That way, when you move that fader, then that fader will control the volume. So you don't have to keep changing your mix every time you, uh, you know, you decide to do something or if you make a mistake or you want to just lower the volume a little bit overall for the drums because you like that mix. Then you would just use your your actual drum bus there. Um, so that is that. Um, now, parallel compression. Um, I'm sure some of you have probably you know, uh, wonder how you could use it. Um, you know, again, this is all strictly for beginners. This is not for, you know, intermediate or advanced, uh, you know, music makers or producers. But uh, if you want to make a parallel compression type of track or type of bus, then it's fairly simple in reason. All you would do is uh, the way that I found that you have to do it is you have to go out of a bus that you already have and just go to new bus and then just rename that bus and then, you know, basically relabel the one that you had. And all you have to do is just go out of the parallel bus um, from the one that you want to go from, which in this case would be from the drum bus, and have that go to the input of your new one. And it is as simple as that. Uh, and then, of course, the purpose of having a parallel compression bus is that you can make your drums a little bit thicker. You can make sounds a little bit thicker. Um, just give it max compression. I think on this one, uh, let's see, what did I have in here? Here I just have a, a Fab Filter uh, Pro C2, and, but it can be any pressure that you want to, comp I'm sorry, compressor that you want to use. It uh, doesn't really make a difference. And you just basically follow that same um, pattern of anything else that you you know, you want to bring in here. So I think I have uh, in this particular template, I want to use some of the new things that they had. Uh, so I set up uh, one of the chords and scales. Figured I'd give that a shot. I have that on my keys. Um, so I can do some things with that. I, you know, the Clang, Pangea, and then uh, Humana. Huma I think that's it, Humana. Uh, and then a couple other things that I, I added in there too. So just some things I think I might use. Then, of course, I got to have massive you know, for some sense and things like that. And, you know, as you your creativity grows, you can add more things to your template and be fine with that. So um, other than that, should be good. 
uh, fairly simple and to the point. Uh, any other questions about how to route anything? Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of things that say submix. Uh, I don't like for everything that I, um, all the sounds that I'm making to come out of the main bus. I want it to go into a submix bus where I can do some things on the actual output uh, before it goes to the main. And in Reason, Reason has the console set up. Uh, it, it's, I think it's modeled after the, the, uh, the SSL either 4000 or 9000 console. I can't remember. Um, but it has the actual bus compressor for the, uh, and that's on the master bus. It's already there. So, uh, I don't like to have anything running through it. Sometimes I do so I can hear what the color sounds, but you know, as I'm mixing it, you know, uh, there's an advantage to that. Some people do it. Some people don't. I mean, it just depends on, you know, where you're at and how you want to do what you want your workflow to be. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And most of all, stay queued up. Peace. Thank you.